Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Conklin Duraflex. So a lot of you guys have been really excited about this review, a lot of people have been really excited about this pen coming out, and I was too. So I'm really glad to take a look at it today, I'll go over what I like, what I kind of felt and towards, what I dislike, do writing sample, give you a conclusion. I will go ahead and say very interesting pen, and if you have a chance to pick one up, you're looking for a flex knit pen, you might want to jump on it because the stock seems to be a little bit low. On to the size comparisons. So you can see where we have the Duraflex, we have the Twisby 580 All, the Lamy LX in rose gold, see what it did there, and then the Nemesine Singularity. So you can see this is about the same size as the Twisby, really, really, really close to the Twisby, a little bit larger than the LX and a you know small amount larger than the Nemesine as well. On to an uncapped size comparison, you can see here it loses a lot of the length when you uncap it. If anything, it comes closest to the Nemesine Singularity. It is kind of dwarfed by the, uh, the Lamy and the Twisby. Not so much in total length, including the nib, but up to the section, you can see there's uh, quite a bit of length loss. Here's a posted size comparison of the pens. So you can see here that it actually kind of matches up with the Lamy LX. Um, they Neither of these three pens post a real. The Nemesign does post pretty well. By the way, if you're interested in seeing the review of that now, if you're a Patreon subscriber for the early bird tier or higher, you can go ahead and go uh, check out a review of this guy as well. But this pen is, it does not post very deeply. Um, I'll get to that later, but it, it does come up to a very similar length to sort of the uh, Lamy Safari or Lamy LX all-star length. And here it is next to a savagely misshapen snail carved out of rock. All right, on to what I like about the pen. So very first thing, and I think the main reason people are buying this pen, the only reason really, is that nib. The nib on this, uh-oh, almost dropped it, is fantastic. If you watch my unboxing review, you know I have a little dent right there on mine. It has not affected it at all, though. Very, very springy, nice, nice soft nib. Um, it doesn't require much force to flex it. It, it writes well most of the time. I'll, I'll get to that later, but it's, it's fairly reliable. I haven't really had any flow issues or anything like that. The only time I've gotten railroading is if I'm just flexing too fast. You have to take a little slow, as with most flexible pens, but it's nice. Um, if you watch my unboxing, it kind of like heaped ink onto the page. It isn't quite that bad anymore. It's still very wet, but it's kind of on par with noodlers if you've ever used any of those. Um, so the flow is very nice. The nib is interesting looking. Um, it uses cutouts similar to the Pilot Falcon uh, nib that they have. And it also has a heart-shaped breather hole, kind of like the Platinum 3776. The build quality on this thing is fantastic. Uh, there are no real seams from any of the injection molding that I can see, much less feel. Um, everything is joined together very well. Uh, there's no real gaps or anything like that. It's just, it's it's well made, and I, I can tell. Especially for a, uh, a $60 pen, which there aren't many pens in this price range to begin with, but compared to, you know, your $30, $40 pens, this feels very, very, very nice. I really like the writing on the barrel as well. This, um, it says Duraflex, limited edition, and then it has the number of your pen out of how many they've made, which is 1898, which is the year they were uh, founded. You can see there on the, um, the end cap, Conklin established 1898. Very nice touch. I mentioned this in my unboxing, but it reminds me of the, the vintage pens, where they would kind of etch in the barrel the name of the company and things like that. They wouldn't really have it on the cat band. Sometimes they'd have it on the clip, but it was uh, a lot of times it's on the barrel, especially on older ones. Speaking of the uh, the writing there, I really really appreciate the branding on this pen. It's not overly you know out there. They didn't plaster it all over the clip or anything. It doesn't even say Conklin here. It just says Duraflex limited edition. You know, it does say Conklin on the cap band, but it's pretty minimal. It doesn't really stick out. And on the back it says uh, Duragraph, which I'll. I will say there has been some, some rumors of them doing other stuff with this nib. I'm not sure if they're going to continue putting them in the Duragraph pens or sell them separately or what, but just keep an eye out for that. Um, I should have that in the upcoming This Weekend Ink number 3. 
And then it has, again, the little Conklin. This is the most obtrusive one to me because it's white, but honestly, you really don't see it all that much. The pen is very clean aesthetic. I really, really like the design of it. It's I, I enjoy flat top pens. It's, it's just, you know, kind of minimal. I, I enjoy it quite a bit. I don't enjoy it quite as much when it's uncapped, just because I feel like they could have done the nib and rose gold or something like that. That would have really, really set it off. But... It, it looks really, really nice just sitting on a desk or something like that. It looks very, very classy. The clip is very springy as well, and it has, I'll kind of try to show you, almost like a little cone sticking down. That makes it very, very easy to get something up under this little dip here, like a jean pocket, shirt pocket. It slips on and it holds it very well. Very, very nice clip. The shape's kind of boring, but it's not bad. I almost wish they had done a bit more of a square clip. I think it would have fit the design a little better, but it does add some interest to it. Next, the packaging. Now, I will say this packaging is ruined for me. I'm going to throw it in the trash because of this, but I just want to show you because it's pretty nice. So if you watch my unboxing, you've already seen this, but it's, it's basically just a, uh, you know, a little blue box that opens up and you have your pen in there with a nice kind of soft lining. Very nice for a $60 pen. But the box has a typo on it. Not this blue box. Blue box is fine, but this outside box. Um, it says Duraflex with the Omniflex nib instead of Omniflex. Again, Omniflex. That's not the, that's not the right name. It's not the right name. It's Omniflex. So this is going in the trash. Just this whole thing because I, I'm not dealing with that. That's a bit ridiculous at this price point. All joking aside, the price is pretty good. So you get a flexible nibbed pen, very well made, limited edition, 60 bucks. There's not much in this price range when it comes to flex nibs. So I think they're carving out a very interesting market here. Because basically you have noodlers from the you know 10 to $40 range, and then nothing until you get to the Pilot, which isn't even a flex nib, it's technically a soft nib. But as far as modern flex goes, there's almost nothing in that price range. This fills in a gap, and I think it does it wonderfully. A few parts of the pen I'm a bit more neutral toward. The unscrewing of the cap, it takes a lot of revolutions to get this off. I'll, we'll count it here. I'll just put my thumb here. So let's see. We got one, two, two and a fourth. That two and a quarter turns to get the cap off is a lot. The reason this is not in the dislike section is because every single time you cap this pen, it lines up with that engraving, which is fantastic. I understand they kind of had to do this, but I almost wish at that point they just made the threads a little shorter to reduce it to maybe in one and a half turns or something like that. It's harder to deploy this pen quickly, which most of the time you're not going to be doing anyway. The section of the pen is somewhat slick. It is nice and contoured. It's, you know, it's a good diameter. It's it's nice. But it's occasionally I'll find myself when I'm writing with this pen ending up more down here, which is not good. So this the section I wish they'd added a little texture to or maybe done like a matte finish. If they'd have done the whole pen in a matte finish, I would have been happy, but then the Duraflex wouldn't stick out as much. Um but this this nib or the section is just a little a little bit slippery, so I oftentimes find myself a lot closer to the nib than I want to be. Speaking of the nib, the nib is blank. I really wish they'd done something with this, even if they just stamped it with the Conklin or a Flex or Duraflex or anything. Like, they just left it completely, completely blank. It looks really, really boring, especially when you have the pen uncapped. It's just, eh. The nib adds a lot of interest with the design. I really wish they capitalized on that by either changing the color of the nib or doing some sort of etching into it or stamping. On to what I dislike about this pen. There isn't much, but there are a few things. So the first thing is actually going to be the printing on here. Now, I don't know how well you can see this. I may have to cut in a, uh, a macro shot or something if we can't quite get it. No, you can kind of see it there. So some of the printing is just not pleasantly done. There are a lot of little uh, 
parts where the the ink kind of comes together, especially right here on the Conklin logo, you can kind of see where the I touches the N. It's kind of just a, a glob there at the bottom of the N. It doesn't look very nice at all. It's not a big deal, very, very minor detail, but it is somewhat annoying to me. Next is that this posts very shallowly. So you can see the size of the cap here. It really only goes to right right above this band. It's it's terrible. It's super easy to get off. It doesn't post very securely at all. And when it does post, it's just it's super long. It's a bit ridiculous and super back heavy. The balance even here is you know a little rough. I've noticed that this pen tends to dry out when you lift your hand up from the paper for, you know, 30 seconds or so, you'll get a hard start pretty much every time. It is a little bit annoying, and that's probably my biggest issue with this pen, is that little hard starting problem. All right, on to the writing sample. So I've been working on my flex writing a little bit, so we're going to see how much better I can do than the unboxing. So you can see you do get some line variation out of it, some pretty decent line variation actually. But you can also write very normally with it if you choose to. Now I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know why anyone would get this pen to write normally. Unless you just really loved the um, design of it. And don't get me wrong, I enjoy the design quite a bit. But... I don't see paying $60 for a flex nib pen and not flexing it, especially when it's, I don't know, completely intended for that. This is even worse than normal because I'm doing it under a camera, but you can see some of the line variation that adds kind of to your writing. So quick reverse writing line here and then I'll do a couple you can certainly write at at normal pressure with this and get a you know decent size line but if you a little railroad there but if you push it you can get some pretty incredible line variation at this little steel nib pen it's pretty impressive um, this ink by the way I'm not writing it all the way out but I'll show you a bit of a normal writing sample with this sort of between a fine and a medium or maybe a, a Western Vine. It's, uh, what is this one? Ralph Waldo Emerson Twilight Blue. But I'll show you here. I'll just kind of let the nib sit for just a second. And then we'll try to try to write with it. And chances are pretty high that I'm going to get a hard start out of it. So yeah, so you can see there. It, it happens. It's not terrible. It's, it's not bad at all, but... It is there, it is present. And again, you can write with this completely normal, or you know you can come up and do some flex with it, and it's nice for that. I like the versatility of it, and it is fairly smooth. It's about what you would expect from a fine nib. So it's not crazy, but it's one of those smoother fine nibs I've, I've seen on it, even though it is technically a, uh, a flex nib. But it's a very, very nice nib. I think Conklin did a wonderful, wonderful job with the nib on this pen. Conclusion time. Should you try it, buy it, pass? I'm going to say buy it. This is a very interesting pen. There aren't going to be many made. I believe the first batch that Goulet got in 
um, sold out within about three hours or so. The next batch is later this month. Sign up for that mailing list if you're interested. Now, I briefly mentioned this, Conklin is going to be doing more with these nibs. So if you're not in love with the black and rose gold, I know some people have qualms with that, I obviously don't, I love that color combination, then maybe wait. Maybe they'll put it on your favorite color Duragraph, or just sell it individually so you can put it on whatever pen you want. So, but if you're interested in this design, this kind of color scheme they have going on, go ahead and get it if you can. 60 bucks is not a bad price for this. I think it performs wonderfully. It is miles ahead of any of the Noodler's Flex Nibs I have used ever. It's a lot smoother than an actual calligraphy nib, like a Zebra G nib or anything like that, which those are, you're going to get a lot more flex out of those as well. But if you want a nice mixture of flex in everyday writing, go ahead and pick one of these up. They're very, very nice, and I'm very impressed with my first offering from Conklin. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to check out my other videos. And again, if you're a subscriber to Patreon, you can go ahead and check out my review of the Nemesign Singularity up right now. Thanks for tuning in.